Welcome to the Bill Bert. Podcast. <laughs> Wait, you do the pod, I'll do the cast. <laughs> so you say it again. Welcome to the Bill Bert Podcast. Yeah. <laughs> that has to be the intro. That's got to be the intro. What's going on? I, I love, I love uh, 6 o'clock, 6.30, making dinner. You are killing me right now. What? I want to live with you. Oh, it's the best. I, I, lo- I look at every day as a party. I look at every day as, as something big should happen. Last night I said, hey, you what do you... You sound like an old, sassy white woman <laughs> who just thinks he lives in a small town. I look at every day like it's a party, okay? And when I show up, people know that I'm going to be a hoot. What do you do at your parties? <laughs> oh, I'm having a party tonight. I'm throwing a party tonight. I'm throwing a party Saturday night. It's Chinese New Year's. I'm throwing a party Saturday night. I love parties. I love everyone getting together. I love packing for vacation. I love getting on the plane for vacation. I like the day you get there. I have such intense depression leaving Hawaii or leaving of coming home from a vacation or I am the exact fucking opposite for real I swear to God dude I you know what I love I love a staycation I love not going to the airport oh. I love dude everybody want everybody comes here there's some of the sickest fucking hotels ever out here and you just get in your car no stress hey you oh. want to stop and get something to eat there's no stress you just no. drive to the fucking hotel Yes. My youngest daughter, Isla, and I were in the car. There's palm trees right outside your fucking house, dude. I don't know, I don't know what you're <laughs> flying all the way to the middle of the fucking house. Hawaii is the greatest place in the entire world. It's the greatest place in the entire world. I, I didn't believe it the first time when you did a little sassy head thing the yeah. second time. I totally believed it. <laughs> dude, Hawaii is the greatest place. I, Hawaii is the greatest. I love Hawaii. I love Hawaii probably more than anywhere in the world. I, I could. Can I tell you what happened last time I we went to Hawaii? What? No, you had the greatest time of your life. They gave you a lay and they no, said, hey, I don't Bill, know why. I, maybe I just watched The Big Lebowski, but I, it was morning, and I started drinking White Russians. Oh, and fuck, I was, Bill, this sounds so awesome already. I was, I was on, my wife wanted to go down the beach because she has pigment. <laughs> so I fucking, I, I, and I'm like, I don't want to fucking go down on the beach. So they had some bar out there, you know, with the Gilligan's Island little hut fucking thing, totally for the tourists. Fucking right? great bartender with a ton of personality. Not really. He was just ah, fucking making shit, right? So I go, I know oh, this. I you're go, getting me so excited. I go, I know this is weird. I know it's only 10 in the morning, but I would love a white Russian. Dude, one of the dumbest things you can ever get shit faced on is something that has dairy in it. Oh. So I just started fucking drinking these things. And that was just back when I was eating like an asshole. So like, you know, I was kind of addicted to sugar. So these things tasted right. It, my body was like, this is what you need. They're so fucking. I might have white Russians tonight. They're insane. They're the best. They are fucking insane. Do you know, hold on. Let me put a... It's do you like know what drinking I used to do? a milkshake and getting shit-faced all at the same time. Do you know what I used to do? I'm going to put a pin in this. Do you know what I used to do at clubs? On What's Sunday that? nights. Sunday night's always a rough night for comedy. You pack during the day. You watch football. You go in. You're going to miss a game, do a show. I used to say on Sunday nights, I'd get on stage. i go, let's see if we can out-drink the white Russians. Drink all the white Russians that this club has. Everyone just order white Russians. And everyone would have white Russians. Dude, the club must have loved you. They're like, this is one of the most expensive drinks we have. Well, you're making a killing for us. It's has to re- half the reason I toured was that I would come in on Sundays and sell white Russians through the fuck. I'd have fucking four on stage. People would be having nine white Russians. People would be farting like crazy. Uh. Dude, murder white Russians. Murder them. Keep going. Okay. So, I love that. You're, I, this so is maybe my I best Bill Burr story I've ever heard. So my wife is like just taking in the sun. She's frolicking in the surf, and I am up at this fucking Gilligan's Island bar. <laughs> I am fucking crushing white Russians. I had like four of them. Oh. And she fucking comes off. You ready to go? I was like, yeah, I'm ready to get it. She goes, How many did you have? And I was like, four. And she, she just starts laughing. So now they're in me. So now it's like sugar, right? So I want to keep going. So we go to the airport, and I find a place, and he's fucking making them. And I had like another fucking... I think I had like like a total of like seven or nine oh. before I got on the plane. I was so fucking hammered. I text. I got a group text going with Ian Bag to, <laughs> to start a fucking uh, what's that? What's the, what's that fucking game where you slide on the ice in Canada and you let go of the thing? Curling. Curling, yeah. He wanted to do it, and I just said, "Fuck it, let's do it." That would be. I was just being all fucking <laughs> drunk, and let's get together. And so Ian got all excited. 
And I think it was Bardnick, me, and, and Bardnick's like, yeah, fuck it, I'll do it. I got the, all of this excitement going. Blind drunk. Couldn't even yeah. remember doing this. I, got, I still feel, I, every time I see Ian, I, I try to apologize for that. <laughs> Forget him excited for that. And I fucking, and then I got on the plane, dude. And I fucking passed out so oh, hard. And half, no, halfway through that flight, dude, I woke up with like a, like a nine white Russian hangover. Milk. Dude, it was like, I, I, don't, I think I drank for like maybe four days. <laughs> oh. I knew you thought it was going to be a big number, but it was like, it, it was one of the worst hangers I ever had. I felt like I drank like, I don't know, like antifreeze or something. It wasn't right. Oh, I love white Russians. I do too, but not nine. Nine, nine's a lot. I could have two. I just got into, I just got back into Bloody Marys. I couldn't do Bloody Marys. They gave me heartburn. And then I was golfing with my oh, dad. Let's do, let's do worst experience, like drinks you had, a, like. The worst experience drinks? Number one, without a doubt for me, is uh, uh, Southern Comfort. Southern Comfort. There was this thing called, uh, <laughs> it was called a uh, Southern Sunrise, right? So it's, a, it's like a tequila sunrise, but made with Southern Comfort. I'm not good with I used to drink everything straight. So what's a tequila sunrise? Tequila sunrise is like orange juice. Cranberry juice oh, I get and it. tequila, I think. It's, like it's breakfast juice. Yeah. With the tea. All right. uh, <laughs> at a party in college, someone says, who wants a Southern Sunrise? <laughs> it's like a bad 80s action oh, movie. It's so good. It was so good. I go, I, I remember at one point saying, I can't even taste the alcohol. And that's bad. It's really bad. That's the first thing, bing, bing, bing. Next thing you know, I am, I mean, I'm spinning. I'm spinning so hard that I'm holding on to a fire, where I'm in, on a, on a, at a fire, like in front of a fire, and I'm holding on, going, I just want to fall back into the fire and die. I am so fucking... Oh, God. Oh, I've, I've never been like that as in a grown-up, but, man, that southern sunrise, oh, I mean, I was like, I was so funny, too. Like, I remember everything I came out was like a... Like, every, like, you guys want to buy a boat? I don't know what I'm laughing. Or... Then, then all of a sudden you get quiet. And then it just changed. And I went, yep. oh, I'm not feeling good. And everyone's like, uh-oh, I think they caught up to him. And everyone else had seen this train going off the fucking rails. Ooh. You punched yourself out. I've never had Southern Comfort since. Wow. I didn't have rum and Cokes. I didn't have rum for fucking, uh, from 1987 Holy until shit. 2004. I didn't have it for 17 years. Really? Yeah, because uh, I went down... We used to drink in this industrial park, like outside. You'd go all the way down into like the woods. And these two chicks showed up and they had rum and coke. And I, I was a beer drinker and I didn't know how to drink. Uh, I didn't know that hard stuff. Where you just sort of sipped and, and like, you know, half a shot of that was like drinking a beer and a half or something. So I was just throwing these fucking things down. And I had to drive down from Boston down to North Carolina the next day with my brother. My brother goes, don't go out and get fucking hammered. You got to do half this drive. <laughs> and dude, I came home fucking blind drunk. I fucking puked out the side of the car and I fucking passed out. I didn't wake up until Virginia. <laughs> and I woke up, no dude, I had like, I don't know, he was driving an old car and it had like, you know, the fumes from the gas. It was just one of the, I was just like, I didn't fuck with that shit for, yeah. 87 to 2004 when I was doing a weekend at Hilarities. And, and uh, it was one of those weird weekends where New Year's was Wednesday. So then New Year's Day, we just had off. Yeah. And then I had to finish out the weekend. So uh, Jason Lawhead and all those guys were still working there. And they took me out and we started drinking rum and Cokes. And once again, I got totally fucked up. I got, they, they lost me. I remember that was their big thing. We lost the headliner. We don't know where, I was in some fucking titty bar. It was one of those weird titty bars. It was like a full bar and they had a full menu. You could like eat a grilled cheese sandwich and then there was some girl with like her titties out. Was it called Christie's? I don't, dude, I don't remember. One of the best titty bars in the entire world is in Cleveland called Christie's. Do they have, now they have locals there. Oh, fuck yes. Dude, this is the way to get you in. Uh, whatever titty bar, it's like local talent. Oh, I need to hear the accent of the place that I'm at. If I can hear the accent, I fucking love it. I remember I got a lap dance in Christie's and I actually told the girl to stop. I go, I think I'm cheating on my wife in this lap dance. And she was like, huh? I go, you need to stop. I'm going to go back to my friends. Yeah. You still got, I haven't been to a titty bar like. In... I've been recently a few times because I, I never had gone with money. 
and I'm not saying like uh like <laughs> but like I always went when when you were a kid and you were like like a hundred dollars was a lot of money like two hundred dollars was like a fucking dickload of money now to you spend. Came, now you come in as Travel Channel's Bert no, Kreischer. The last time I went to a strip club, I went with uh, a bunch of this big showrunner. His son and his all his friends were living in New Orleans, and they came to my show and they were really impressed. Like they've never been to a theater show, they'd never seen comedy like this. This guy's dad's one of the biggest showrunners in Hollywood. And I texted his dad. He's like, hey, take him out to a strip club. And I was like, yeah. And so I went. And I, and the lap dances were like 20 bucks. And I was like, there was like a bunch of guys. I go, here's 200 bucks, ladies. Take care of the guys. And all the girls just hung out with them and like sat on their laps. And it, 200 bucks wasn't a ton of money for me. And I went, oh, this is fucking fun. Like to make, to make sure everyone's having a good time. I didn't get any lap dances. I just drank and talked. And, I had, and these kids were like, college kids were like, dude, this is the most amazing night of my life. And you're like, <laughs> <laughs> like it was twenty bucks. I gave the girl twenty bucks. It was so much fucking fun to be the to be the Hugh Hefner of the club as opposed right. to the degenerate who's like one more lap dance. Can I get one for fifteen? You know. I used to go to this one with a couple buddies of mine, literally just to drink, because oh. it was a cool place to drink, and we would stay up at the, the bar. Best. We'd stay up the bar, and when the women would come out, we'd go over and we'd just put money on the table, and then we would just go back up and we would fucking argue sports and everything. It was fucking. We used to call them board meetings. So we would go there. How great is this? Well, because we, <clears throat> we would go there and no one would bug us. Yeah. That's what we would do. So this was like, you know, I don't know, like seven, eight years ago. And we would go over there and we would just, we would hang up at the bar or whatever. And we would literally just sit there and tell stories about doing stand up and laughing. Up. But we always made sure that we took care of the women that were, whatever, gave the yeah. money. But when we go back to the bar, so it was like. And that, that was actually, that was a fun one because that one was just topless. And I always found that that was, there's a, that one's more like a party. Yeah. Whereas full nude was always just like serial killer, creepy, <laughs> fucking whatever. But like the topless one, that was actually a fun one. But like, um, the last lap dance I got was very recent at the end of this last tour we did for the, for the body shots tour. Uh, -huh. my, my bus driver is a, big strip club guy and he wanted to go to a strip club really bad how old is he uh my age uh ron Funny black enough. dude the funniest guy in the fucking world i love being around him he makes me giggle i don't get like it because it's such a jerk off it's like you're not getting laid it's but it's for like, I, what, what not is, to not to like what is by, the point not to speak not to this is gonna i mean just i don't know if i'll say it but but for black dudes going to a strip club is a different experience it's like a it's like for him, it was like a fucking night out. It was like this. Oh is yeah, like Atlanta, it's like a party. Like yeah. The black, the black club was a party. Yeah. The white one. I remember this chick down there said, "Yeah, she goes, yeah, white club, man. That's a, it's like yeah. all creepy and shit in there." I was oh. like, yeah, I was like, yeah. We what, had what, so I don't much... know what kind of creepy. We went in. I took out a thousand bucks, and I said, I just gave it. I said, passed around to all the guys we were with, all my openers with us. Guy from Australia was with us. Uh, very funny comedian. You're really baller bird, aren't oh, you? Oh, and I gave everyone money, and I said, I want everyone to have a great time. It was, well, it was the end of the tour. It was right. the last night of the tour. So I said, we took him out. I got, I take care of all the drinks, gave everyone money. And at the end of the night, this girl comes up. Oh, Bill, I had the best lap dance I've ever had in my life. I, 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 when I walked in, I knew that the, the owner of the club had been at my show, right? That's how we got back there. What was it? You didn't get any makeup on your pants? No, two best lap dances I've ever had in my life. So the first one is I go in and a girl's leaving and she goes, oh, I'm like a huge fan. And I went, oh, thanks. I, and she's that's, in street clothes. She's in street clothes. Hold on. That's too she's in weird, street man. clothes. She's in street that's, clothes. I'm gonna give you a lap dance because of your credits. That's... She's in street clothes. Ah, and I say to her, she goes, I wish I had known you were coming in. I would have just worked longer. And I was like, ah. And she was like, uh, well, uh, okay, it was great meeting you. And I said, can I, can I just say something? I said, one of the lap dances I've always wanted is a person in street clothes to give me a lap dance, like jeans and shoe, shoes with socks with a coat on. Is that on. true? Or you just hundred percent. Because it's what, it's what I want. It's like what you want your wife to do is to come home and give, you know what I mean? It's like a regular person doing it as opposed to a I person in lingerie. Alone. So she says, so she goes, really? And I said, I'll tell you what, before you Stop leave, picking on me. I go here, let's get a lap. I'll get, I'd love to get a lap dance from you, but I want to see you take off your street clothes. She was like, okay. And she like goes in and she like, like sits down and takes off her shoes. <laughs> I'm just funniest, picturing Mr. Rogers. It was the funniest lap dance I've ever had. She's like, she had the mark from her belt in her stomach. It was the greatest fucking lap dance. That was the, I, and then I was like, that's the only one I'll get. I just wanted to do it for fun, right? I gave the, I overtipped the girl. And then the end of the night, the, the one girl comes up to me and she goes, uh, 
can I give you a dance? And she hadn't been getting a lot of dances at night. And I felt bad. And I said, yeah, sure. Oh, we'll we used to strip yeah, yeah. club go with a heart of gold. So she, so she, we go back to the thing. And it's I like said. It's like Charlie Brown Christmas tree. I said, so I don't know anything about the rules. I got just, you know, like I'm, 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 I'm pretty like, I'm pretty, I'm married. I'm not going to touch you or anything. And she goes, oh no. That's the worst when you're she, trying to be the, the you know, I, I don't usually go to these, my friends wanted to go to this. No, I was trying to be like, kind of go, like, I'm not a dog. I'm not going to be fucking groping you. You were. You were trying to be the, the creep with the heart of gold. She said, uh, oh, no, no, no. I, the manager has told me who you are. And I went, what do you mean? She said, they said you can do anything. And I said, anything? She goes, anything. I mean, there's no rules for you. And I went, cool. And I FaceTime my buddy Cowhead in Tampa, the DJ, Mike uh -huh. Calta. I FaceTime. I go, can he watch? <laughs> She goes, sure. And I FaceTime Calta. He didn't answer the phone. I go, I'm out. I'm done. <laughs> the only fun would be to be in a strip club and FaceTime your friend and be like, hey, man, I'm getting a lap dance. <laughs> At two in the morning, it's time. Oh, now I want to go to a fucking strip club and have fucking white Russians.